Hello everybody and welcome back to Rogue Tech, where it has been announced that there is going to be an update that breaks save game compatibility sometime in mid, well early to mid-May is what they're currently planning. We don't have an exact date at this time, but it'll be somewhere around a month until the end of this series. So with that in mind, we're going to continue to head on forward and we're going to get these repairs completed. That shouldn't take too long, it should be completely fine. Our pilots are back. Well, Kodiak is back. He's the only one that actually matters here. The and there's our financial report. I think that we're not going to run extravagant. It's only plus two techs. So I don't think that's really worth 900k more for this particular month. Last month it was worth it, but this month I don't think it is. So let's hop into the barracks here and check to see if Bullfrog needs any XP spent. No? Okay. What about Kodiak? Yes, he can get a point of ca of tactics. Cool. So those are the only two non-maxed mech warriors right now. Bullfrog is just running in the simulator for the moment, so that'll be okay. We'll hop back to the Argo here and finish up these repairs. Salamander will be done in five days. Excellent. There's some medical expenses going on here. Um, Darius, find some special discounts. Okay, we lost some morale there, but that's fine. Our morale has actually dropped pretty dramatically. We should maybe do something about that. But for right now, we will continue forward. Not too much we can do at the moment. Okay, three days until we're done with our repairs. There we go. Now we are below 10 million sea bills right now, so I would like to get us some money. What do we have available for our contracts here? Okay. I mean, this is a recovery mission, but look at how low this pay is. That's almost certainly not going to be worthwhile. I'm actually thinking about maybe going for something like this. It's a battle in an urban environment versus Karita. With decent max pay and only seven and a half skill. Let's go ahead and do that. This is a free priority salvage. We'll sit here. This will pay for our financial report. That's wonderful. Do we have a pilot for the salamander now that our previous pilot died? Uh, Chronic Toast, what do you got? Oh, okay, perfect. He is a salamander pilot, so that's fine. I think we go ahead and do this. Darius says this might be difficult. He's almost certainly wrong about that. We'll go ahead and confirm it. On seven and a half skill difficulty, I'm not expecting too much challenge here. What we're looking to do right now is we are looking to build up our funds a little bit before pushing up that difficulty. I would like to start dipping into 11 skill somewhere around there. That would be ideal. For right now, that's not super possible <laughs> because there weren't any 11 skulls available. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see. So that'll be just fine. As far as our mech loadouts go, I'm reasonably content with them right now. I'm not seeing any major outlying issues in terms of mech weakness, except for maybe like our Battlemaster, which is a backup mech. Eh, that could definitely use some work. But for now, of course, we need to destroy enemy units. Satellite surveillance pictures show that a heavy lance was inserted onto the planet's surface by a Karitan dropship. Currently, we believe they're securing their LZ, preparing for whatever operation they have planned. Before they finish securing the area, we'd like you to interrupt them. They're heavily armed, so expect strong resistance. If they just sit down, they may not be battle ready. We might catch them with their metaphorical pants down. Indeed, we might. So yeah, we want to make this cache. That'll be very helpful. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Okay, let's do this. So what do we got here? Obviously, it's an urban environment. We're expecting serious resistance. So we're going to move up over this way. They are up in this area. We may drop like here as far forward as possible. Something kind of like that. We aren't going to necessarily have direct LOS on them. Well, it depends on where they are, actually. We'll see. 
Hey, look at that. We've got a direct LOS. <laughs> okay, so what do we see up here? Well, Rogue Tech will start respawning in a moment. We lost our sensor trace. Okay. Well, we saw two mechs here. And I think the other two were like over here. Not 100% on that. It is round one. I'm not sure what we've got going on here. But I think they're moving now. Yeah, now we're into round three. Okay, so now we enter combat. We immediately pick up reinforcements. Okay. So, the reinforcements look like they're like out here. We see a Victor, a Chaparral. That Chaparral is probably a fairly high priority target for our artillery. We see a Victor and an Atlas. The Victor we can get through pretty easily. We see a Marauder over here, a Warhammer 2C over here. Okay. What are your orders, so, Skipper? that Victor has two evasive pips. Now, our Salamander appears to be stuck here. So, we're going to have to do careful maneuvers. We're going to head up over here. That means that we cannot Warlord. So, we're going to have to fire on this Victor as is. I think we're still better off firing MRM-40s. We're going to try to tag, or rather, AX rounds. We're going to try to tag him. Only a 50% chance there. Reasonably solid damage to him. I was hoping to make him unsteady. No such luck. There we go. Okay. So this Chaparral out here is going to move now. And it fires on our Annihilator. Ooh, the AMS didn't succeed. Okay. I can't take much more of this. That's sad that we did not get the AMS done. But I guess it's okay. The Mauler is going to move up over here. I'd rather not expose ourselves to fire from this Warhammer 2C just yet. And we're going to move up here and fire on this Victor. Hit odds aren't ideal. But we'll Warlord, and uh, we'll get what we can. Yeah, this will have to do. And actually, we straight up killed him. Okay, that was unexpected. It must have damage transferred into the torso, and he had an XL engine, I guess. Standing by. Or something along those lines. So the Fafnir can sprint forward, and we're going to do so. Nothing really else to do there. Let's see what they do in phase 14 here. Dragon Slayer jumps. Not able to fire, though. That Chaparral is still a pretty a major target for us. We could move our Annihilator up and hit this Warhammer 2C. That is an option. And I think so we're going to take it. Throttle. So the Annihilator will move on up. It was hit in the rear arc previously, or actually... It was hit in the rear arc, but it managed to actually get in front of it. That's that's a little awkward. Okay, well, we'll, we'll go ahead and Warlord here and fire on the Warhammer 2C. We'll cluster this, although our hit odds are not as good as I was hoping. Mostly just no visuals. Okay, fair enough. So there's some damage to the 2C. Reporting critical hit. What else are they going to do? This is a unit we don't see, so probably it's someone from this reinforcement lance over here. A Shadowhawk. Okay, that's not too threatening. Receiving you. Next up is our Mad Cat Mark II. I would like to move the Mad Cat Mark II up. I'm surprised that this isn't in LOS here. Like, I'm quite surprised that that's not LOS. Okay. But well, we'll position here regardless. And maybe we'll toss some LRMs at the Chaparral. What are the hit odds there? 8%. Okay, that's not very good. 32 on the Warhammer 2C. That's probably what we're going to take. Target confirmed. Yeah, got a little bit of damage in there. Okay, so what else are they going to do? They're going to move up with their Marauder and not fire. I like it. The bull shark is going to step forward over here. We're not sprinting it. And we are going to Warlord. And we are dropping artillery on the Chaparral. We need this thing as gone as possible. Roger that. 
That was a solid hit there. I like it a lot. So yeah, that was basically three quarters, or not three quarters. That was basically a quarter of its armor gone. Orders. Excellent. The longbow will also step forward. Position confirmed. And it's also going for the chaparral. We'll, we'll warlord this, obviously. Um, warlord it. There we go. Chaparral. And th these hit odds aren't the best, but we'll see what we get. A decent number of hits there into the front armor, which is now exceptionally low. Yes, it's very possible that the boar's head finishes it. So we're going to move up the boar's head and we will warlord. Fingers crossed. Nice. Very solid hit there. Enemy mech destroyed. Okay. So there's the chaparral gone. We know there's one more unit over here, though. The Atlas moves up, and that is now going to be a direct fire target for us. He hits the Mad Cat Mark II reasonably hard there, but not as hard as it could have been. Major armor loss. Okay. Sounds good. Did we just detect another target? No. This is Phase 21, and this is the, the unit that we don't know about. So it might close into sensor range here. We'll see. Well, that's very rude. They've blown past my armor. Losing armor. So whatever it is, it's got a rotary auto cannon, and it's exposed this arm, which has a Gauss rifle HA20 in it. That's really very rude. We're gonna sprint forward with the uh, salamander, and we're gonna position it here. All right. To kind of block for that. We're also probably going to fire on the boar's head. We have not warlorded, of course, and so we're going to strip off as much armor as possible here. I got you. Reasonably solid there. Okay. So the Dragon Slayer Victor jumps and does not fire. I like it. Commander? Our Mauler is going to want to sprint forward over here for a clearer LOS. Sprinting isn't the greatest here, but it's pretty much what we have to do. We'll fire the ER medium lasers and the heavy gauss. Ooh! That was lucky. That was a lucky shot with that heavy gauss. Okay. Well, we'll take that. <laughs> the Shadowhawk fires on the Salamander, stray shots the Mad Cat. That's a little unfortunate, but it does not get into the torso, so that's fine. Or rather, the arm. The Longbow is going to move up here. And at this point, we just need to check hit odds. 42 looks to be the best, and so we'll fire on this Warhammer 2C. Roger. Solid armor reduction there. Received. Next up, our Fafnir is going to attempt to close in over this way, and it actually succeeds. We don't get LOS on these lads, sadly, but we do get to fire on this Shadowhawk. Now, that's out of range of the UAC-20. We'll just pot shot the ER medium laser. Yeah, I'm not shocked that we don't hit. Failed to connect. Okay. Okay. Standing Next by. up, our Annihilator is going to sprint up here as well. We don't get LOS here. Which definitely makes me sad, but we'll hit the Warhammer 2C in its weak arc with our LRMs. Taking the shot. This armor in that arc is getting very low. So next up, who are they going to move? Well, we don't know. The, it's the Marauder, looks like. And it moves here. And doesn't fire. That's an interesting choice. So we're going to back off the Mad Cat Mark II. I don't want it to take additional fire right now. And I think we're just going to drop more LRMs into this Warhammer. That's a structure exposure. I like it. So the Bull Shark is going to move up. And we need to think, do we want to fire on these two with the Long Tom? Or these two with the Long Tom? 
And I think the answer is these two, because we're likely to take down a building with our artillery over here. Which means that they would take fall damage. Yeah, that building goes down. Nice. So fall damage onto that victor. Beautiful. Okay, phase 12 is going to be the Warhammer 2C. Fires on the Salamander. Hitting it pretty hard. I'm catching some serious shit here, Commander. You are indeed. There's no doubt about that. So the Boar's Head is going to, I think, fire on the Dragon Slayer over here. And that will shoot down this building. We're going to fire in high explosive mode, for sure. Nice. Okay, so these two took fall damage. That's always good. Yep. Next up, our Salamander is going to advance over this way. And we can fire on that Marauder. This is actually going to do a lot of side arc damage. I actually kind of expect the Marauder to die from this, don't I? Or very close to it. He is cover plus guarded, so maybe not. We did get through the armor there, though. Report. But yeah, that cover plus guarded definitely uh, did a lot of damage to how much damage we were doing. That's a weird way to say it, but I guess it's true. <laughs> so we move up our Fafnir. We can go for either of these. Hit odds are better on the Marauder. This is a guaranteed kill. Like a million percent. Or we don't get the crits we need. I guess that works. I assumed that it had an XL engine, but it didn't. Sure. Well, I mean, it's very close to dead. Yeah, it's got like 12 hit points. <laughs> Good to go. So the Mauler can move up over here. We can go for either of these. If we go here, what are those hit odds? 23% versus 38. We're just going to move up here with the Mauler, and we're going to not fire the Heavy Gauss because I don't want to stray shot it. And then we'll just do something like this and eliminate that Marauder. Tell me what to shoot. Well, that didn't go well. <laughs> the Marauder is exceptionally close to dead right now. These two are not particularly threatening to us at this moment. Okay. That rack is also not amazingly threatening it's right now. Hard hit there. It's getting banged up real good here. But we now know that it's a Cascatel. Waiting for order. Okay. So. With that being the case, I'm thinking about moving our Madcap Mark II here. Copy that. Specifically for hitting the 2C. I'm going to go ahead and Vigilance this, just in case. This is a clan mech, so we are expecting that there's an XL engine in here. So that means we're also expecting this to kill the Warhammer 2C. SRM ammo explosion there. It didn't quite go into the torso the way I was hoping it would. We didn't get as much torso damage as I was looking for. So the longbow will move on up. Now we could fire on the Cascatel if we wanted to. That's not a great option, if I'm honest. We could go for the Warhammer, and I feel like that's a better option. We like don't fire the ELRMs, or maybe we fire like one of each. Yeah, this could easily kill the Warhammer. Engine crit there, so it doesn't have an XL engine. We incapacitated the pilot though, so that's fine. Commander, the annihilator will now walk up. Moving out. I'm gonna check hit odds on that Cascatel. They're not great, so we're going to go for finishing off the Marauder here. We're not gonna fire the LBX, and we're not gonna fire the Zeus either. Just eliminate it. We'll go. There we go. Tango down. Okay. 
So next up, we're going to move up with our bull shark. We're going to start sprinting this because we want to get into LOS over here to be able to fire flak mode at this cascatel, which we can't do right now. But what we can do is we can fire at this dragon slayer. And that's what that's exactly what we're going to do. Not a great long tom shot there, if I'm honest. Did that even do damage to the cascatel? Technically, it did a little bit. Okay. Right here. The boy side is going to move up similarly. We actually do want to sprint it. Accelerating two locations. And we're going to drop additional artillery on the Dragon Slayer. I'm not going to fire the LRM-20 due to heat. In target. That was much better shots, sir. Okay. So these are the only three remaining units. That Cascatel needs to be eliminated before it gets in too close. The Victor is now able to fire its Gauss. That was, that was not actually five damage. That was through armor. That's like a Gauss Rifle Blackwell or M7. Yeah, it's an M7. Okay, so that's fine. Reporting heavy damage. Yeah, you're okay for the moment. The Shadowhawk moves up and goes for the Fafnir. Not particularly frightening. Okay. So phase 28 is our Madcap Mark II. I'm concerned about moving the Madcap Mark II first. We're going to reserve that. The Salamander can move up. And I definitely want to vigilance the Salamander, giving its armor, given its armor levels. And we want to hit that Cascatel. Improved MRM-40s are only 20%, but we don't need a ton of damage into the Cascatel. We just need a good armor reduction, which I would argue that was. Commander. So our Fafnir is going to head forward here. We kind of want the Fafnir to take point. I want to check hit odds on the Cascatel, but I imagine they're very low. Yes, indeed. So the Victor is probably our best bet here. It's not a great bet, but it's our best bet. Okay. And this will now be the Cascatel. I imagine it's going to go for the Salamander. Let's see what it does. Interesting positioning. Okay. Okay. Armor breach. Internal damage. That was pretty much exactly what we thought was going to happen. This torso, though, that's an unfortunate location for the exposure to happen. Ready for orders. So the Madcap Mark II is going to move up here. Roger. And... The Cascatel hit odds are not great. The Victor hit odds are much better. I think we may have stray shot the Salamander's rear arc a bit there. I'm out of long range missiles. Um, actually, no, I don't think we did. So that's good. The Annihilator will move up. Roger that. The Annihilator could target the Cascatel, but we're going to target the Victor instead. And we're going to fire the LBX and the LRM-20 Zeus. We're going to Warlord, and this could easily kill the Victor if we get lucky with our rolls here. We need them to cluster into the CT or the Torso here. We don't know if it has an XL engine. It may or may not. And actually, we did get it. Beautiful. Okay, so the Victor's out of here. Waiting Next forward. up is the Mauler, and the Mauler is going to sprint up. I doubt we're going to fire the Heavy Gauss on these odds. Yeah, no, that's not happening. We're just going to pot shot the two ER mediums. And yeah, we didn't hit them. I'm not shocked. That's completely and totally expected. So the Longbow is going to move up. Actually, I'm going to reserve the Longbow. I copy. We're going to move up with the Bull Shark first. Because the Bull Shark is going to fire on the Cascatel in flak mode. We're going to Warlord. Firing all weapons. Nice structure exposure there. Unfortunately, we didn't take it down. 
Ready for orders. The longbow is still not moving Standing yet. By. We're going to move the boar's head up. Moving. Because the boar's head is going to fire on the cascatel also in flak mode. These hit odds aren't great. The warlord. Okay, so they successfully AMS'd the arrow 4 there. But we managed to hit it with the sniper artillery in flak mode. So that cascatel is definitely a lot lower. But I was hoping it would be shot down by that. That's why I was reserving the longbow to use the longbow against the Shadowhawk. But that's not really an option. These hit odds are dreadful. They're so much better on the Shadowhawk. Okay, we have to shoot at the Shadowhawk. We got a structure exposure on it. That's nice. Target taking a critical hit. Okay, so the Shadowhawk moves now. We expect that it shoots at the Salamander, and honestly, it probably hits this torso, crits our engine, and destroys the Salamander. <laughs> if I know rogue tech. <laughs> Actually, it just braced. Confirmed. Interesting choice. We're going to move over here with our Salamander to defend it, and we're going to fire on this Cascatel. We're going to Warlord. Hit him as hard as you can. That was a lot of internal damage, but not what we needed. Wait, no, it was what we needed. Vital component destroyed. The Cascatel is down. Okay, that's very, very good. Uh, guys, those aren't our plans. Interesting. My armor is being blown apart. It must have been because we were out of sensor range. But I never saw this airstrike coming in. I'm taking heavy hit, Commander. Regardless, it's not the end of the world. Okay, that was bad. Oh, we're fine. I'm not too concerned. The Fafnir is going to move up. Our units that are actually in danger are already well out of the airstrike area, so that's not a problem. We're going to fire on this Shadowhawk and see what yeah. we get. One internal damage shot there, Commander? but that's okay. The Mauler will sprint up over to here, where it gets a clear shot. And then we're going to fire on this Shadowhawk. I'm actually surprised we have 51% hit odds with the Heavy Gauss. But, okay, we'll take them. And that's just straight up a kill. Beautiful. We are out of here. We only took the one round of plane damage, so I'm not too concerned. That explains why this guy didn't actually move, though. But yeah, he was out of sensor range, so we actually didn't see him do the call-in. Regardless, it's not relevant. It was only the one shot. That's not too bad. Honestly, I would prefer taking the one pass of the airstrike over the Shadowhawk shooting at the Salamander because there was a real chance that the Shadowhawk destroyed the Salamander there. So that was preferable to me. Excellent. That could have gone better, no doubt about it, but it also could have gone far, far worse. Not too bad, all things considered. What do we want from salvage here? An engine core 320? Seven clan double heat sinks. I mean, we have eight right now. But still, seven in a single stack is a lot. Do it. We also got some medium lasers we don't really need. A double heat sink kit. I guess we'll keep that around. Cool. So I'm not shocked that there were two lances. That was honestly fully expected, given the compensation. We took a fair amount of armor damage, but honestly, our internal damage was minimal. So that's great. We're very pleased about that. How much damage do we think we took? Do we get another deploy this month? We have like 14 days. I don't think we took that much damage. I think we can deploy this month's tick yet again. That would be really good if we can. Because this deploy pay, paid for itself and this month tick. Okay, 300 and... 
15,000. That's quite a bit, but we knew we took a decent chunk of armor damage. The question is, is it actually going to take 49 days? What's this looking like? 12 days for the Madcap Mark II, 12 days for the Salamander. Okay, that's a little more grim. I was hoping it wouldn't be quite this long for these two. I was hoping more along the lines of 10. This means that we probably can't de deploy this month tick. Unless we want to leave these two at home, and honestly, a huge amount of our armor strip is reliant on these two mechs. So we're probably going to have to take this month tick and deploy early next month. Okay, well, that's fine. We can figure that out next episode, though. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.